Hi there, my name is Darwin. I am a civil engineer. Also, I have a vast experience and exposure with architecture and entrepreneurship. I do not claim to know everything, but what I know, I for sure will share it with you right on this channel. Over the last few years, I have gathered a wealth of knowledge and experience by passion and by practice, and there's still a lot more to learn. I'll be sharing everything here. Let's walk this journey together. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on that notification bell so you won't miss out on anything. Uh, so you might be you might be wondering, uh, you're kind of caught up in between whether you should build a bungalow or you should be building a storage house. Because, uh, because you heard from elsewhere that it's really expensive to build a storage house. Um, which I really do understand that uh, it's, uh, in some cases it's, it's true and in other cases it might not be the case, you know. Sometimes it might be cheaper for you um, to build a storage house. Also considering that when you build a storage house you save a lot of ground space, you know. You still have more space in your compound and uh, well, uh, we will find out in this video uh, as I demystify and break down the, the materials that you need to build a storage house and their quantities, you know. Then you'll be you in your perspective based on your pocket. You should be able to tell whether it's affordable or it's not affordable to build a storage house. My job is to break it down for you so you can tell for yourself. Well, today we are going to be discussing the cost of building a three bedroom storage house. Okay, uh, this house specifically has a footprint of 6.5 meters um, by 7.5 meters. That's approximately the size of, uh, of a parking lot of three cars. Okay. if you are to visualize that uh, in practically mm, uh, so it's really a small house so it's really a small house you cannot categorize it as uh, as big houses you know but it's really functional on the ground floor we have only one bedroom which is uh, approximately 3.3.2 meters by 3.4 meters and then we have a living room uh, the living room the dining and the kitchen all are in open plan okay so it kind of gives you this illusion that the house is actually a big house because most of the spaces are, are being shared. And of course, if the person staying in bedroom one wants to take a shower, uh, there is privacy provided. You see that if there are people in the living room, they won't be able to notice that someone in bedroom one is actually going to take a shower. So there's a bit of privacy there. Okay. Um, then um, uh, you also notice that under the stair, there is a small store that is under the stair, if you notice. Then the kitchen is open plan, but of course that's just the inside kitchen. Um, we added also an outside kitchen. But remember, at the point of doing these, uh, the bills of quantities that we are about to discuss, we had not yet added the outside kitchen. So it's, it's not going to be included in the bills of quantities. So what we are discussing basically is the main house without the outside kitchen as you see it there. Uh, then uh, if we go to the, the and, and then when we go to the first floor, okay, where there is a master bedroom, you notice the master bedroom is self-contained and has everything within it. Uh, then there is another small bedroom up, bedroom two, that can actually accommodate two beds. Um, of course, it would be also uh, save you a lot of space if you used a decker bed. There are quite a number of nice, nice looking decker beds that are on the market. So you could still have more space in that bedroom if you happen to use a, a decker bed. And then it has a large balcony. The balcony is actually measuring about three meters by about uh, another by three point four, okay, three point four meters by three point by about three meters, okay, which is really big enough. And if you notice from the elevations and from the artistic impressions, I love the balcony. The balcony is really big enough. The balcony gives a lot of space for socializing and enjoying that cool breeze of the evenings, okay. So, okay, anyway, what we are here today is not so much to discuss the plan. Uh, we are here to discuss the cost of building this very house, okay? So, without wasting a lot of time, let's go into it. Uh, before we go into the details of uh, the costs of building this house, um, it takes quite a lot to come up with all these videos, okay? If you believe these videos are really of, of help to you, I would uh, request that you give this video a thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel. Uh, any support is really, really highly appreciated. Okay. Uh, so going on with the uh, with the material schedule, with the material schedule, uh, you can see uh, that we have columns and we have rows. Um, 
the column, the, the first column is, is for the number of the item, okay? So we've given them numbers one, two, three, forward, uh, so that we can easily refer to them, okay? So that we can easily refer to them. Uh, then the second column, we have item. Uh, item is basically the, ma is, is the item, the materials that we're actually talking about. And then in the third column, we have the unit. The unit is, uh, is what measure of quantity that we use. For example, for cement, we quantify it in terms of bags. Uh, for timber, we can quantify it in terms of pieces. Uh, for maybe DPM, we can quantify it in terms of linear meters. And then uh, in the fourth column, we have quantity. Quantity is the number. We have quantity, then we have rate, uh, then we have the amount. And then we have the last column is the accumulated total, uh, the very last column. You notice that we, uh, we are going to keep adding, we are going to keep getting the total of all the things that we have actually discussed so far. So by the time we reach the last item, we should be having the, the total of all those items under the accumulated total, uh, the accumulated total column. So let's go into this. Uh, the very first item is uh, setting out of the house. So there we do not need a lot. We just need uh, timber and strings, you know. As you can see from the, as you can see on the screen, uh, the total for that is going to be 145,000 shillings. Then going down to foundation works uh, up to the slab level, that includes uh, uh, the foundations, the the the, the plinth wall, and um, the slab as well. And then in the second part, we have uh, the foundation works up to the slab level. Okay. So as you see, we are going to need uh, some excavation works, we are going to need some coarse aggregates, we need steel bars, lake sand. I will not be saying them specifically because I am projecting them on the screen so that you can see them. Okay, so you can see that uh, our foundation up to the slab level is actually going to cost us a total of uh, 8.4 million. So in our accumulated total column, you have uh, the 8.4 million plus what we gathered from the first, uh, from the first part which makes the accumulated total at 8.55 million. All this is in Uganda shillings, okay? Uh, then we have uh, uh, the third item, which is uh, the ground beam and the slab. The ground beam and the slab as well, you, you know, uh, the ground beam and the slab, we are going to need uh, coarse aggregates, you'll need BRC. Uh, BRC is British Reinforcement Cage. Uh, um, we put it on the ground. On the ground floor, uh, we don't usually use uh, reinforcement bars, we just use the BRC. It might be quite uh, expensive and quite unnecessary to use um, to use iron bars in the ground floor slab, um, unless you're in areas that are really swampy and uh, the ground, you've not done sufficient compaction below the ground slab, okay? That's when you have to do, uh, that's when you have to use reinforcement bars. But if you've done really good compaction, you put your maram, you compacted it, you put hardcore, you compacted it, you only need BRC. Uh, so we uh, we have uh, the ground floor beam on the slab taking us to a total of uh, 7.93 million. Uh, so if we accumulate that and add what you collected from the previous, the total becomes 16 million so far. Going forward, we have uh, the ground floor columns and the block work that is going to... I'm not going to be discussing all that. Uh, the total is going to take us to 8.8 .8 million, as you can see on the screen. And then the accumulated total of everything you've done so far goes to uh, 35 million, 25.3 million. Remember, I'm actually only discussing the, the, the materials. We've not yet included the labor, we've not yet included delivery of these materials to site. Sometimes the, it might be inclusive of the cost, sometimes it might not be inclusive of the cost. But what we should measure on this time is really the column that has quantity. The quantities will remain constant, but prices can actually change depending on who is supplying the materials. So as we go to the first floor beam and slab, uh, you can see it's going to. You can see the slab is quite expensive. Uh, the slab is going to cost us twelve point six three seven million, which brings us to accumulated total of thirty seven point nine million so far. Okay. Then you go to the first floor columns and the block work. Um, in this in this breakdown, we are using hollow blocks. The hollow blocks of one hundred and fifty millimeters. Okay. Uh, the reason why we are using hollow blocks, the reason why we are using hollow blocks is because we are trying to avoid the formwork for timber. The formwork for timber that can really quite be expensive. And also, um, hollow blocks also contribute to the strength of the building. So you find us having small columns and small beams because part of the load of the building is actually being taken up by hollow blocks as opposed to clay bricks. Clay bricks are already heavy themselves and not as strong as hollow blocks. So 
uh, clay bricks already exert a lot of load on the structure so we require a lot of uh, we require uh, large sized structure members like the columns beams and slabs so as to, to also be able to take to carry on the load of to carry on the load of the bricks all in all um hollow bricks are much better than clay bricks uh, when it comes to building a story building of course that might not be the case with when you're building a bungalow a bungalow if you choose to go for uh, for a bungalow, if you choose to go for hollow blocks, you better go for the small one, for the smaller ones of 125 millimeters, okay? But uh, when you're doing a, um, a story building, hollow blocks are the way to go. I'm saying this from seasoned experience, that hollow blocks will give you much better. They'll give you much better save. They, they'll give you, they'll give you much more benefits than using clay bricks. Uh, when we go to the ring beam. Um, uh, we are combining the the ring beam with the the the, the tank slab as well, eh? so that's how you see the cost is a, a bit higher than it should be. So the ring beam and the tank slab are going to cost uh, about four point uh, four point roughly four point five million, and that brings our cumulative total to fifty million. And then we go to the parapet holding. Parapet uh, the parapet holding is basically that wall that exceeds. Uh, that goes past the roof because what we are having in this design is actually a flat roof. Uh, which means uh, the wall is actually going past the roof and then we have the roof uh, slanting at a very small gradient to drain the roof off to, to drain water off the roof and drops it at the back of the house okay um so the parapeting walling uh, is costing a total of 790,000 um which brings our total to 50 million point 8 okay um then the roof then the roofing uh you might notice that this roofing is really really way cheaper than most roofing because uh, the method you've gone for here is flat roof we have it costing uh, 2.79 million which brings our cumulative total to 53 million 53.6 million as you can see on the screen um, then we go to the ceiling the ceiling is going to cost about 1.7 million bringing the total to 55.3 then the plastering um, plastering this is uh, for both internal and external plastering okay uh, it's going to cost, uh, materials are going to cost um, 9.6 million, which brings our accumulated total so far of the materials you've spent to to 64.9 million, okay? Uh, then we have painting, painting, uh, painting, as you can see on the screen, uh, painting costing us 2.4 million and tiling also costing us 7.3 million. Um, the total of uh, everything so far bring us to... 74.66 million okay uh, of course some of these things might have to change we might have considered uh, the ordinary type of, of tiles and then maybe you at the point of construction might say no i actually want uh, italian tiles which are actually more expensive than the tiles that we get from china uh, which which might bring your totals to different than what we have here but this is basically for just decent materials and having a decent house and something you can count on without really being expensive um, then we go to plumbing works uh, basically plumbing works include the wash and the wash and basins the toilet seaters that uh, you know all those things the inspection chambers the manholes the plumbing fittings the sinks and all that which brings our uh, total to 6.9 okay 6.884 million and bring our total to 81 million so far okay um so far then we have electrical installations, we have conduits, we have electrical installations uh, totaling up to 3.1 million, uh, bringing our cumulative total to 84 million. Then we have doors, we have windows, we have glasses, all those giving the total as you see on the screen. So by the time we finish all the windows and doors and also fit in the glass as well, uh, the total comes to 95 million. Uh, 164,800 shillings so far okay so you include the septic tank uh, the soak pit the septic tank at uh, around 3 million the soak pit at around 800,000 um, and then also miscellaneous now miscellaneous is really just to cater for things uh, it's to cater for things like for example you don't hear us counting the veranda okay also maybe changing preferences of materials also uh, there is some little stone pitching that you might need to do there at the bottom of the walls and also things that you hadn't earlier calculated 
So we are putting miscellaneous at 5 million. So that brings all the total of all materials to 103 million. Uh, 103 million, okay? Um, then, so remember all these have not been including transportation of all these materials to the site. So you find that uh, f if we consider 5% transportation of, the ma of these materials and delivering them to site, of course this really de delivering them to site, of course this really depends on, um, it depends on where your site is actually located and who is actually supplying you the materials. Uh, so, after adding, um, so after adding transportation, it brings our total to 109 million, okay? So then we add labor. Uh, labor usually ranges between 20% and 30%. So we consider the middle ground here, which is 25%. Uh, and that brings our total to 135 million. Now remember labor, we, though we consider 25%, uh, it really depends on the engineer uh, or the building contractor that you decide to hire to do for you the building work. Say. Sometimes when you are procuring all these all these services all at once, you might get a discount. But um, if you decide to do it in bits, the labor might actually even shoot beyond thirty percent. But basically, that's what it should be. So that's the total one hundred thirty-five million. Um, uh, we've not we've not included wardrobes. You notice that we didn't include uh, the costs of landscaping, doing the pavers, you know, clearing the compound, uh, planting things here and there. And of course, we also did not include the cost of building the boundary wall because the boundary wall depends really on the size of your plot. And of course, all this is based on the assumption that, uh, that your land is generally flat, you know, it's not a hilly area that is going to give a lot of complications to the people who are building that is not going to give a lot of uh, demand on materials, you know. And of course, you also make an assumption that you're not building in a swamp. Uh, the foundation that you're going to build in a swamp is going to be much more expensive than what, uh, than what you've discussed here, okay. So guys, that was it. So if you are there thinking it's, it's expensive to build a, a storied house, you can gauge from this and see whether it's actually expensive or it's much cheaper than you thought it was, you know. Um, if you if you've enjoyed this video, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, and otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Stay blessed. I'm Darwin.